difficult. <laughs> I think it was, you know, it was ever going to be anything different other than that. Um, thought they obviously clearly started on the front foot. Difficult for us to get out at first and, and at 1-0 down. Um, I thought we started to become a little bit more of ourselves, be a little bit braver. Um, the second goal clearly was was disappointing from our side. We, we'd come off a man-to-man -man press, left a little bit of space. We were slightly disorganised in our right channel. They see that, take it, and obviously 2-0 around, you know, just before half-time is very, very difficult for us. Um, but look, I have to say with everything that... that you know, that we're going through at the moment, it's a real challenge, but then to perform the way we did in the second half. I was looking at their last however many games, I see a six, a five, a six, a four, and everything, you know, it could have happened that. You know, I don't think they would have wanted to just say, oh, we're happy with two. I know they're winning the game, that's their prerogative, but we limited them to a couple of long range efforts second half. I saw a team that tried to take control of the game, a team that tried to be brave, tried to press aggressively at this place and, um, and kept going and kept going. So. Again, I'm, I'm proud of them. I'm disappointed that we've lost the game of football, but I'm realistic to know that this game tonight won't define us, but we're running out of games as well. I understand that. With the amount of players you have out at the moment, how much more difficult did it make you to prepare for this fixture? Yeah, they're all difficult at the moment. It's not just this one, but with, um, yeah, I think 11, 11 senior players missing and, you know, a, a, a lot of them are, would be starters for us. It's hard at the best of times. Um, you know, I think you will all understand that anyway, so it's fine. But there's no excuses. We 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 planned and prepped the same way. We, the players take on the information so well. You can see a team that's competing: Tottenham on Saturday, Arsenal tonight away. They're hard games, but we did. You know, we did. So I'm really proud to represent this football club tonight. I really am. Our supporters were amazing. They kept going. They understand what we're going through at the moment. They understand tonight was always going to be difficult. Coming up against a brilliant manager, a brilliant team, who are in great form, who give you really nothing. Um, and second half, I saw it. I saw us get behind them at times. I saw us create decent openings that we just didn't quite capitalise on. When we did arrive or we got behind them, the cross might have just been lacking. We might have not been in there with the right numbers when the ball did come into a good area. Because the lads have given us so much out of possession, then it's hard then to get on the front foot and get in the right areas when we, when we did get behind them. But that we tried, we gave everything, we didn't go under. And that's the one thing that I can always guarantee with this football club that we won't, we'll keep fighting. Ross, hi. Um, hi, Danish. You said that games like this won't define what happens to you this season. Despite the recent results, are you growing in belief that you could achieve what many people are thinking is impossible? I, I honestly believed it from day one. As soon as we got promoted, I believed it that we can do this. I, I believe it with every fibre of my being. I believe in this group. We've had a lot thrown at us over the last few weeks. I, I, towards the end of January, early February, I'm looking at us, I think I really like what I'm seeing at the moment. Uh, we're really, really competing in this league and we're looking good. Um, we've, we've had a lot of, yeah, over the last few weeks, we've had a lot of, of injuries, clearly. <clears throat> and it has knocked us. It's knocked a little bit of rhythm. But I still see a team that's competing with Villa, with Tottenham, with Bournemouth. Palace, Forest, you know, we're, we're in all the games. Tonight we're in it. If we get something, you know, if we get a goal there on 82 minutes or something, we're, we're in the game. Maybe it becomes a little bit nervy. We weren't out of it. I don't know, Arsenal, you might say, yeah, they defend, they defend so well, they're brilliant, but, and they, you know, they don't give hardly anything away, but we weren't out of the game. We weren't. That's what gives me belief that these players, when I look in their eyes in the dressing room at the end, I can see they're with us. I can see they're with me. They believe. And all our focus now has to be go has to go on to Saturday. It has to. Ross, uh, Hashi had his uh, first game with Sunday Tail tonight. Uh, but uh, so far, how do you see his, uh, his adaptation, especially as far as the little one's man to man defending? Because it's not easy. No, it's especially not. Against, like, tonight's opponent. Yeah, it's not easy. You know, we, we are quite unique. There's a few teams like us, and we'll press high and, and then obviously have to recover back in shape. We're asking a lot of Hashi at the moment because he's not really played in his best position yet for us. So I, I love him. He's an amazing person. He's given us absolutely everything. I thought his performance tonight was good. Um, so really pleased with him. Ross, Arsenal made five changes, I think, um, starts for players who've not started in months. Mm -hmm. Complications. How much does that? Well, a, how much did you anticipate on some of those changes, and how much does it change your preparations an hour before kickoff? Not not so much. Um, we anticipated one or two. We thought there'd be a couple of changes there. 
I know, and, and let's, let's look at this. They're playing us and we're severely depleted at the moment. They've got huge games coming up the weekend, Champions League, everything else. So we anticipated a few changes. They could see it tonight as an opportunity to do that. Don't find it disrespectful at all. I think it's the right thing to do. Um, so it did, but it didn't upset our rhythm because they still try to do the same things. Like we try to do the same things even though we have different people playing. So it doesn't change too much. Take Saka out, right? You know, it's a little bit different. He might not, you know, on that side and then might not be coming in all the time on the left foot. It's a bit different. But, um, you know, they've still got that that back four, at least those two centre-backs, the goalkeeper, Ben White still there. And, you know, they've still got that solidity as well. So, and, and they're not bad players that come in either, are they? So I think, yeah, it, it, it didn't change too much of our preparation. We thought there might be a couple of changes. I was going to ask you, if I can, about one of those changes in Milton Smith Road, just because we, we didn't see much of him starting. And I wonder what you made of how he played. I mean, yeah, he's, he's a really good player. I mean, I was lucky enough, he probably won't remember this, but I did a few camps with him with the under-20s when I was working at the FA and I thought he was outstanding. I mean, we played Portugal, we won 4-0 in Portugal and he was brilliant, you know, so I've always been a big admirer of his. Um, yeah, I thought he was very good. He's a really, he's a, he's a top player. I mean, just they've got a lot of top players here, haven't they? And it's just been unfortunate he's not been able to get in. But I think he's an exceptional player. Rob, you've spoken about the challenge of facing Arsenal. I'd just like to know from, from your opinion, really, from a coach's perspective, what is it that makes them such a formidable opponent? Well, they give they give no chances away, do they? Really, now you know to to the opposition teams, and we saw them against probably the best team. I don't want to upset any Arsenal fans either but maybe you know all right it's up for debate but against a top top team on the weekend and they limited City to very little so they don't give you anything and then they've just got it's very clear in how they attack but but it's really difficult to stop as well they're always there with good numbers and then they can really suffocate you as well so they can and I think maybe they're the one team out of all the three that are fighting at the moment they can sort of play any game if it's a physical game, if it's a, a footballing game, if it's a running game, whatever it is, they've got the answer. They've got the, the, the personnel to sort of play any way. I, yeah, I suppose City and Liverpool, when I think about them, they can probably all, they can do it all. I just think they've got no, those three, they've got no weaknesses really, especially when we're looking at them. Sure. Um, I, don't, I don't really see any weaknesses. Did you see anything or any changes you were able to make at half-time that helped you get a foothold in the game? No, I mean, I think, I know they were on the, they had, Clearly more territory in the first half, but I thought we, you know, a lot of our plan would have been about trying to press high. Once they break through, we need to defend well low. And it was about trying to counter. And when we could get up there, try and get some control. Um, we did that at times in the first half and we, you know, it was a couple of fleeting moments. But it, it, I thought it was more a mindset. We talked more about mindset. You know, what's the worst that's going to happen? We're losing the game of football now. What's the worst that's going to happen? I just had to see a team that was trying to be brave and not give, give up. Talked a lot about trying to get the last goal. I always talk about let's get the last goal in the game. Um, and we tried, we couldn't, but we tried. Um, we talked about we just did one or two things. Obviously, Chongy came on fairly early in the second half as well. And I thought it gave us a little bit more pace on the outside, a little bit more control with Clicker and, and Ross in the middle of the pitch. We, I thought we looked a really good team with the ball in the second half. Um, but again, they're so well organised, it's really difficult to create those big chances. And, and when we did get into good areas, like I said, just lack a little bit of quality or the, the numbers to really hurt them. Um, but yeah, mentality and then a couple of little shifts, but but not loads. It was, it was uh, you know, there was, um, it was more about we don't give up. We can't, we can't ever do that. Rob, um, regarding the injury list, um, is there any good news on the horizon? And, and while this is ongoing, who are the key players in the dressing room who, are, who you're relying on to be more of a hit? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're all key at the moment, you know, young Christian Chigozzi is 16 years old, is key at the moment, and, and if he wants to speak up, he can do, but clearly we've got some senior players that are in and around the group, Tim Krull, Andros Towns and Ross Barkley, more experienced, Premier League experience, and have been around a lot, um, but even a, a Ted and Mengi, for instance, now is becoming a real leader for us, Pelly is, Luke Berry, Corley Woodrow, these are big personalities for us in the dressing room, in terms of people coming back, we might get one back for Saturday, we might not. Um, there's five or six that we just won't see again this season and we're hoping for maybe three or four. There's a couple that are really touch and go before the end of the season, but we're going to push because we have to try and take those risks. So it, it really is, it's like nothing I've ever experienced before to have this many senior players who were really influential for us as well missing, but 
this is the cards that we've been dealt at the moment and we've got to keep going. We can't moan about it. We can't hide away from it. Um, but the, the, the players are all with it. They're all fighting for each other and uh, that's really important. Yeah. It's not too much of a no, I mean, Fred blessing first start for us in a long, long time, and in, you know, in the Premier League at Arsenal as well. So we're asking a lot of these players at the moment. But I was really pleased with him. He was another one that could, he was teetering on the edge. We could break him if we push him too far. So he had to come off at that stage. He's not had loads of football at all, and um, yeah, I think at times he showed. Well, he, he might have been shocked a couple of times with the speed of it, and wow, well, Havertz got there a bit quickly, you know. But that's he's not experienced that. Um, but he did some good things as well, and I was really pleased with him. He stuck right at his task. It was difficult. Yeah, and Hashi playing out of position, but gave us everything. I was really pleased with him. So, yeah, there was, uh, there was a few good bits in there. The, the defenders defended well for the vast majority of the game, but the moments that we did just not get it right, that was when they punished us. Fans are amazing. They always are. They, they, I love them, and we're really lucky to have them. They're, they're, they're so they're realistic. They're passionate, but they're so with us and, and behind us. I'm really lucky to have them because in this situation, if they turned, it would be really, really tough. And that gives me a lot of belief that they, they're with us. Good. Thank you, guys. Sorry, mate. Just one guy there. Oh, yeah. yeah. You all right? Yeah, no, it's all right. You sure? Thank you. Sorry. It's all right. Just one.